How's it going, everyone? My name is Logan Kilpatrick. I'm the community manager for the Julia language. In this video, we're going to be going over sort of the first steps when we when we get started programming with Julia. Uh, and in that, we're going to actually talk about how to print to the standard out. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about what that means and what that looks like in a minute, how to assign variables, um, how to do comments within your code, sort of the syntax for basic math. And they'll also talk sort of optionally about some, some exercises that are going to come at the end of this notebook. I'll also again sort of make the make the note that this uh, this video and the the other corresponding videos in this course on Julia Academy are designed for people who have experience with a programming language already. So if perhaps you know you're just getting started in your programming journey and and you you don't have any sort of technical background when it comes to programming, there's there's actually a different course and I'll I'll make sure to link that down in the the description below um, within this YouTube video, but um, this, again, we're going to be sort of going rapidly through the, the different high-level syntax in the Julia language and sort of less so focus on the, the ideas surrounding these, these topics. So hopefully that, that helps make sure that you're, you're in the right place. And let's sort of dive in and, and take a look at some actual um, some code in a notebook. So let's... I'm gonna perhaps make things just a little bit bigger here. Um, and then let's take a look at, at some really high level things. So again, we're gonna talk briefly about how to print, how to assign variables, how to comment, uh, and then the syntax for basic math. So if we if we talk about how to print in Julia, the again, the sort of easiest way to, to do that for the most part is to use the, the print ln function. So you can see the print ln function here. Um, and then in the within the print ln function, we're actually specifying a string. So if if you're if you're sort of unfamiliar really quickly, I'll, I'll take one step back. Um, this environment that we're in right now, we're looking at a, a Jupyter notebook, um, and within a Jupyter notebook, sort of if you're perhaps not familiar with Jupyter notebooks, you you might want to look up some some resources um, just to become a little bit more familiar because this is sort of the the mechanism which we're going to be using throughout uh, most of the Julia Academy videos and courses to sort of help people learn Julia. Um, but again. Just to really quickly orientate us, uh, you can see in the top right hand corner, we're running Julia 1.6 within our Jupyter notebook. Um, and then you, you have these individual cells and uh, you have code cells and you have cells that just have like words in them, for example. So you can see this cell here, there's, there's no code in it. Um, and then if we go down to this cell, this actually has our, our Julia code. So if I, if I press the run button or if I press shift enter, um, those will both execute that line of code. So I'm going to press run and we can run this print ln function and you can see the output is I'm excited to, to learn Julia. So hopefully you're also excited to learn Julia. And um, again, that's sort of what the, the print function is going to do for us. And the ln here just denotes that we're going to print the output onto a new line. So instead of taking whatever the, um, the current line is, uh, we're going to print it onto its its own new line, which is which is important and cool to to see. So if we look at how to assign variables, um, again, this is this should be relatively straightforward if you've programmed in another programming language before. But in this example, we're we're going to declare this uh, my underscore answer variable, and we're going to assign the value forty two to it. Um, and then if we run this. We can see that the type of my answer is int 64. So this is a, again a super important distinction to make because if you if you programmed in a language like uh, like uh, Java or C++ for example, those languages require that you actually statically type your variables or, or explicitly type your variables. And um, you know again in those languages you would type something like in 64, then the name of the variable, um, and then the value that, that you want. But again, in Julia, we have this notion of dynamic typing, which means we just declare the variable, assign it a value, and then under the hood, Julia will, will sort of determine what the type of that variable should be. So you can see that in action here. Um, again, this shouldn't be too much of a, a jump for folks who, who are familiar with programming. But again, if, if you're not as familiar with programming, this, this perhaps can, can be a bit confusing if you're coming from one of those um, statically typed programming languages. So let's look at another example right here. And if we run this cell, 
we can see a very similar example. We're declaring a myPy variable, and, and we have the, the first few digits of pi here, and then we're taking the type of the myPy variable, um, and the type of that variable is a float64. So one more example like this. Again, we have this, um, uh, very interestingly, we have a, an, an emoji showing up here. Uh, we have the, the cat smiling um, emoji making an appearance in this Jupyter notebook. And uh, this is, again, one of the really interesting and cool things about Julia is that um, those emojis are actually just Unicode characters. So you can use Unicode characters to make valid uh, variable declarations. And, and that's what we have here. We actually, again, we have a variable, which is uh, an emoji. Um, so this is super interesting, and you can see the type of that emoji, um, or that variable rather, is a, is a string. Um, and if you wanted to, to type out how to actually uh, create this smiling cat emoji, you can refer back to this. But again, we'll, we'll assume for the most part that, that you won't be writing um, your, your code using emojis, even though it looks really cool and is, and is interesting. Uh, perhaps it's it's less sort of expressive and accessible when you write that code. It's just something to keep in mind. Um, so we'll just quickly run through these cells. So again, some more examples of, of creating variables. Um, here we're actually using the, the smiling cat emoji to um, define an integer. If we took the type again of the smiling cat emoji, it would be of, of type in 64 here. And we'll, we'll do that right here in 64. Awesome. So let's really quickly look uh, at, at actually how to do a comment. So in Julia, we have the, the pound sign or the hashtag, depending on um, perhaps what generation you're from. But this, uh, this is denoted with, again, just this symbol that you're seeing on the left-hand side. So if we do that, you see no output. If I were to do something like 1 plus 1, Again, you'll see no output because this line has been has been commented out. If I were to do it on the next line, now we see two uh, because that line is not commented out. Um, and then here's really quickly, just if you wanted to do a multi-line comment, you can see the, the sequence to, to do that here. So let's dive in and actually look at some syntax for basic math. Again, I'll, I'll make my disclaimer that there, there really shouldn't be anything revolutionary here. Um, this, this is sort of very straightforward syntax if you're familiar with, ba with basic math and you've, you've used another programming language before. So we'll look at the sum, which is addition. We'll look at the difference, which is subtraction. We'll look at the product, which is multiplication. We'll look at the, the quotient, which is division. We'll look at the, the power. Um, this one perhaps might be different. In, in some other languages, they, they do things like you use two stars in Python, for example. Um, and again, in Julia, we just use that, that caret symbol to, to denote that we want to do something to the power of, of something else. And the last thing is the, the modulus operator, which just um, does division and then uh, gives us the remainder of that, of that division. So, here we're doing 101 divided by 2, um, and the remainder of that is 1, which is the, the modulus operator. So let's let's talk really quickly about the exercise, and, and I'll sort of perhaps plant a seed and then and then let you all sort of take that forward into the um, after the, the video is over and, and play around with things. But we're going to ask that you um, create a variable named days, and then you assign the value 365 to it. Um, and then we actually want you to try converting the days variable to a float um, and then assign it to the variable days underscore float. Um, so I included the link here to the documentation for the convert function. So if we click that really quick um, and then we type the word convert up here in the, in the top left hand corner. This will take us to the, the core Julia documentation, and then we can um, look through some examples here. So I won't, I won't uh, bore you with sort of the details, but um, that's sort of what the exercise is here. And then we have these assert statements um, down at the bottom, which are just gonna help check to make sure you, um, you, you actually go in and do the, the code correctly. So if I were to try running this right now, 
I'm probably going to get an error in a second. Yeah, and it's saying that the days variable hasn't been defined yet. So we'll we'll leave that up to you, and and hopefully this sort of um, got you started with the with the first few steps, and you you might perhaps see me in the next video, or it might perhaps be Jane, but um, that's going to do it for this uh, getting started basics video.